My fellow cyberpunks, what's up y'all? Your dude Sly here and welcome back to another Sly Nation Cyberpunk 2077 video. With delays hitting most of the upcoming summer and fall releases, news is starting to become, you know, thinner and thinner. We used to get these big chunky news drops about certain aspects of the game or mini games within, and now, well now articles are being written about concept art dogs. So while there are some things to talk about, you know, kinda. <laughs> I wanted to make a couple of videos concerning the different cultures, NPCs, and kind of, you know, groups that you'll find within Night City. Specifically, the corporations and the gangs. In this video, we're going to be checking out all of the gangs, known and unknown, within Night City. Now, Cyberpunk is a very, very large universe, <clears throat> excuse me, with loads of history, technology, corporations, and people. So while I only know of a handful of gangs that will show up within the game for sure, I'm going to go over all of them just in case. Back in late May and June, the Cyberpunk Twitter feed introduced us to a few of them, and we've just recently seen a hint at another gang possibly making an appearance as well. So let's dive in and check out all of the gangs that we will encounter within Cyberpunk 2077. However, it is important to know that older gangs, ones who were wiped out during the uprisings, the you know, different wars, turf feuds, etc., may pop up also. But we don't know all of them for sure until the game comes out. All right, guys, so let's get started. Starting off with the one we know best, the Maelstrom, one of the first gangs introduced by CDPR back in 2018. The Maelstrom falls within a category called a combat gang in cyberpunk terms. Originally called the Metal Warriors, the Maelstrom reformed after its battle with a rival gang and swallowed up a few allies to form what we know today. Their colors are black and chrome and originally followed a code of honor back when they were called the Metal Warriors. However, that code of honor was created by their original leader, and ever since Royce, the current leader, took control, that code of honor has been abandoned. The Maelstroms currently reside within the Watson District at the All Food Plant, and all of the members have two things in common. Number one, they replace the weaknesses of man with machine upgrades, aka cyberware, and two, they all fear a condition called cyberpsychosis. Cyberpsychosis is a condition where the more cybernetic enhancements a person has, the closer they are to cyberpsychosis. It's where you slowly start to lose what makes a man or a woman human. Empathy, emotions, love, it all goes out the window and you start to see humans as weak, under-evolved, and lesser beings. The Maelstrom members keep a close watch to those who bordered the condition, and most of the members within the gang have four to five upgrades before they stop even though almost half of them could clinically be considered to have the condition, while the rest tread the borderline. Within Cyberpunk and Night City, enhancements and cyberware are a part of everyday life, and cyberpsychosis is a huge problem. Brain Dance was a technology actually invented as a way to rehumanize those caught by the condition. The Metal Warriors were dangerous, even with their code, but now they are pushed over the edge. The Maelstrom are definitely one of the more dangerous gangs in Night City. Next up, let's talk about the gang called the Mox, one of the newest gangs within Night City. Formed in 2076, following the death of Elizabeth Lizzie Borden, the Mox formed to continue her work protecting female and male sex workers. Their current leader is the beautiful lady known as Judy Alvarez and the recent love of my life, and they are based in the Watson District at Lizzie's Bar. Not a lot else is known about them besides their brain dance stations and talents. Rumor has it they are also a great gang to get information from. Moving on to the next gang we're going to talk about, the Voodoo Boys, another big one and a central one located in the Pacifica District in Night City and ran by the leader known as Brigitte. They have no known fixed headquarters or hangouts. Previously labeled as a terrorist gang of drug dealers, their main source of income was in narcotics and other non-synthetic drugs. The main members consist of those with Haitian descent and openly practice certain voodoo rituals mixed in with other New Age traditions. Though their drug dealing is what catches everyone's eye, their true purpose is to uncover the secrets of the quote-unquote old net and to see what's behind the black wall. They aren't just a gang of drug dealing net runners, but edge into a new territory called edge runners. They try to break every rule there is and infiltrate every neural network available. After a natural disaster in the 2060s on the island of Haiti, the ones that were left alive fled to Night City to join up with the then ruthless gang called the Voodoo Boys, who were at the time mostly men. Now in 2077, their image has changed. Not as ruthless, but still definitely to be feared. While the members do not have a ton of cybernetic upgrades or cyberware or enhancements, they are definitely not against it, with most of them using small-time upgrades such as audio and visual cyberware. 
Next, let's take a look at some of the more unknown gangs within Night City, starting with a gang called Sixth Street. Now, not a lot is known about this gang. They formed after the Fourth Corporate War, and they are comprised mostly of war veterans who were sick and tired of the quote-unquote protection and services of the Night City Police Department. Sixth Street was founded as an honorable gang to really serve the community without all the red tape, and originally they did serve the community of Vesta Del Rey, but have since spread out all over Night City. In recent history, their pledge to bring justice has been called questionable and self-serving. Other than that, we don't really know much else about them other than their HQ is located somewhere between Santo Domingo and Haywood. Alright guys, next up let's talk about a gang called Tiger Claws. Recently known as Tiger's Claw instead of Tiger Claws, they are another gang that falls into the category of a combat gang. Based in Japantown, which is in Westbrook, they are an Asian gang comprised of highly skilled, highly trained, lightly enhanced martial artists. Rumored to have ties with Yakuza and the megacorp known as Arasaka. They can be spotted by their unupgraded appearance, packing katanas full of glowing tattoos, also known to use motorcycles, specifically crotch rockets, as their main source of transport. Also rumored to be expanding their territory recently and currently in a feud with another gang called Steel Dragons. You'll see why here in a few. So, next up, Steel Dragons. Steel Dragons are a Japanese gang which recruits nomads over from Japan, specifically Tokyo. Known as a Bosuzoku, or Speed Gang, they too are a motorcycle gang kind of like Tiger Claws. Founded by Yorinobu Arasaka, the second son of the Arasaka Corp CEO, Saburu Arasaka. On Yorinobu's 21st birthday, his father led him in on the secrets behind the mega company and to their true purpose. Shocked and appalled by his father's choices and cruelty, he left his family behind with a sole purpose, to destroy his father's evil work and to bring down Arasaka. Steel Dragons use defensive cyberware and have allies all over the world. It took a long time for the gang to form, but now they have networks everywhere. This gang isn't a gang simply looking to make fights or only out to make money. They have a singular purpose. Their only goal is to take down Arasaka. Wherever the company goes, Steel Dragons are not far away. Now, we don't know if Steel Dragons will make an appearance in the video game, but rumor has it they will. Alright, so moving this bad boy along here, let's talk about the next gang called the Animals. Known as a booster gang, the Animals live and work within the Pacifica District, specifically their HQ being the Grand Imperial Mall. Their leader, a lovely woman by the name of Sasquatch. The Animals value power above all else, and that by power I mean physical power. They avoid traditional cyberware and only enhance themselves with melee combat enhancing upgrades as well as steroid drugs called Juice, which increases strength and speed. Making money through drug sales, club security, private security, bouncing, and live or die prize fighting. Even though they're a gang ripe with illegal activity, the animals know their technology, and they know it very well, and they are secretly allied with the anti-cybercrime task force called Netwatch. In 2077, the animals are in a war with the Voodoo Boys for territory, and besides that, we really don't know much else about them. Alright y'all, only two more gangs left to go, and the first one of those two, a gang we might or might not see within Cyberpunk, a gang called Wraiths. Their leader is a man named Dog Killer. They are based in the Badlands of Night City, and the gang as a whole is known as Raffin Shiv, which is a subculture of the Nomad class. Raffin Shiv are the lowest of the rogue nomads. Hated and even sometimes called subhuman, Raffin Shivs form together for protection, and they are a ruthless gang of pretty much desert pirates. They steal, kill, or enslave anyone, and are rumored to mostly travel at night. They prey on the weak and usually single out small groups they can easily overpower. They are only one of two nomad groups that call the Badlands home. The second group is called the Aldecaldos, and while the Aldecaldos do not consider themselves a gang, they are at war with Wraiths due to their savage nature and general disrespect for the living. The Wraiths leader, Dog Killer, wears human skin as his armor, so that pretty much tells you something right there. Now the Aldecaldos are the complete opposite of Wraiths and actually have a very long history within the cyberpunk universe. At one point in time, they even helped Johnny Silverhand out while he hid amongst them for quite a few years. The only thing we know about Wraiths is that they are the worst kind of people, and that they have one awesome vehicle, the 1000 horsepower beast known as Reaver, a supercharged Quadra Type 66, something that I bet will be taken as a trophy for wiping them out sometime during the game. Even though they are an official gang within the universe, they do not have any kind of real underground commerce. They pretty much just sell the stuff they steal. 
And finally, the last gang, at least that we know of, Valentinos. Located in the Haywood district, the Valentinos are kind of an odd gang. Even though they are one of the largest gangs within Night City, they are a non-violent gang and only have one purpose. Sex. Comprised of mostly Latin Americans, but 100% men, their sole purpose is to seduce as many women as possible. They meet four times a year to compare numbers. And that's it. The, the Valentinos may not be violent, but that doesn't mean they should be messed with. Having the most members of any gang within Night City is a pretty big deal, and they stick to a strong moral code bound by century-old traditions. Values such as honor, justice, and brotherhood are treated with deadly seriousness. While they are mostly Latin American men, any man can join if you have what it takes. And that's really about all we know of the Valentinos, and they sound like a huge fraternity minus college. Nothing but parties, drinking, and women. And that's about it, my friends. Those are all the gangs that we know of within Cyberpunk 2077. However, there are quite a few more gangs out there, especially when you look back to Cyberpunk 2020. So there could be a few more lurking around and within Night City, and one of them that I think might be making a comeback from Cyberpunk 2020 into 2077 the video game, a gang called the Black Queens. Now this picture was posted on Twitter, or actually CDPR's Twitter feed, and notice the gold and black cyberware in the lady's arms and head. The gold here is the theme carried out between them, and they are all female. So I believe that this black and gold motif is indeed how the Black Queens dress in 2077. There are no stories or rumors, unofficial or officially, as to if the Black Queens will make a return in 2077. However, I think this Twitter post by CD Projekt Red is kind of meant as a teaser. While they are called the Black Queens, I don't believe they're called that because of race, but rather their choice in color, black and gold along with their activities. They're a small scale gang that pretty much stay under the radar. At times, posing as joy girls or small-time drug dealers, they are strategically placed in and around the city, collecting information, and they're a good ally to have if you need to get the drop on someone, something, or some place. Again, just a guess on my part, but with that post by CDPR and reading about the Black Queens and seeing that picture kind of just makes sense to me. And with that, we are done, y'all. Now, most of us know these gangs. We've heard of them or seen them before. But hopefully, this video brought with it a little bit of extra background that makes your time that much more enjoyable. All the information that I've gathered comes from various sources. All the trailers, gameplay videos, as well as the Cyberpunk pen and paper wiki fan site. It's absolutely loaded with information. So if you're looking to brush up on your Cyberpunk history, it is a fantastic place to check out. You can get lost in that website for hours, there's so much to check out. So if you're curious, I'd highly recommend it. But as for me, that's it guys. As always, thank you guys so much for not only watching my video, but for your support as well. Being a smaller, like a medium sized channel, it's really hard to stand out over the other massive channels. So any retweets, link shares, Facebook posts, or even word of mouth, all of it helps me out a great deal and I definitely appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, then welcome to Slime Nation, my friend. I hope you liked my video and hope that you stick around for all the guides and vids that are yet to come because we are just getting started. Spank the thumbs up or down if you liked, loved, or hated the video. And if you wish to get in touch, business or otherwise, feel free to email me over at SlyNationGaming67 at gmo.com or hit me up on the socials at SlyNation, SlyNationGaming on the FB. Take care, y'all. Try not to go stir crazy from sitting inside all day. And until next time... This is your dude Sly, and I'll see you all in the next one.